All right, welcome to Southwest Career College Clinical Procedures. Uh, we will be demonstrating a uh, injection, various injections demonstrated by our male student. Good morning, I'm Ms. Rapata. I'm a student here at Southwest Career College, and today we'll be doing injections. There are three different kinds of needles that you need for these injections. First, there's the one inch for the intramuscular. Second, there's the five eighths for subcutaneous. And third, there's the half inch for intradermal. You also need certain materials for this procedure, like non sterile gloves, non sterile gauze, alcohol pads, and band aids. You always want to identify the patient before they sit in your seat. And you always want to make sure you have a sharps container and hand sanitizer near you at all times. These are the forms that you'll be given when you're working in, the, in a medical facility. You always want to identify your patient. Hello, are you Bianca Avalos? Yes, good morning. Hello, can you please have a sit right here today? You sit your patient down, and you always want to start off by non sterile gloves. You put your, uh, after putting on your non sterile gloves, Why is it important to uh, identify your patients? So to, when you make sure that the, not the wrong patient is sitting in your seat. I see. You start off with the alcohol pad. When doing this, you always start from the spot where you're going to inject outward into a circular outward motion. You don't want to wipe down the patient's whole arm, but it's good to get a wide angle. For the injection right here, you will use the one inch, for this is an intramuscular injection. Always have your non-sterile gauze ready. You always want your patient to hold your non-sterile gauze to help you out a little bit. You feel for the bone, and at least five inches below is the injection site. You want to stay at a 90 degree angle and make sure to aspirate. You take your non-sterile gauze and withdraw the needle. Make sure to always yell sharps before you throw away any needle. That way no everybody knows that you have a uncapped needle around you. You dispose of your needle and then you apply a band-aid. You said aspirate right now. What do you mean by aspirate? When you aspirate, you pull back on the plunger of the needle to make sure that no blood goes into the barrel of the needle. Okay. If you hit a vessel, then blood will go into the needle, and that's not necessarily where you want to do an injection. I see. This is your subcutaneous needle. This is the 5A, and this injection occurs right here. You want to make sure to get this area uh, a certain angle. Once again, you get your your alcohol wipes. And wipe down the area. Be sure to let the alcohol dry, that way no alcohol enters the system. You remove your needle. Always make sure to be careful in locking your needles, so that way you don't suffer a needle stick injury. You make sure you have the correct spot. You always want your bevel of your needle to face out towards you. Make sure to always aspirate, and then you're done. Always remember to have a sterile gauze with you. Afterwards, same procedure and apply a band aid. You said bevel again. I'm um, asking you, bevel? What is a bevel? The bevel is opening of the needle. Okay. As you can see, every needle has a small opening at the tip. 
That is known as the bevel. Okay. Now what we'll be doing is the intradermal injection. It occurs right here and it always want the needle to at least touch the skin. You're not going to go at a 90 degree angle, but almost at a flat angle with the skin. Always remember to use your alcohol pads. You never want to forget to wipe down the area before you inject, or you could seriously give a an infection to the patient. You want it at a flat angle. where you could almost see the needle on the top. This ball that you see is normal. When you see this ball, it means that you're doing this injection correctly. Remove your needle. Gauze. And always dispose of your needle in a sharps container. Make sure to apply a band-aid. And those are your three injections. Afterwards, there's a certain way to dispose of your gloves. You always want to make sure to stick the fingers at the bottom of each glove to remove it without having to touch it. And make sure that after removing that, uh, your two gloves are now together. If your gloves are covered in blood or anything like that, you make sh you have to make sure to dispose of them in a biohazard container. Afterwards, you use your hand sanitizer and jot down your progress notes. Thank you.